Hi, what's good, bro? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some of the things every starter scripter should know. Why does that sound like I'm about to test your skills? I swear I'm not about to test your skills or anything. This is not an accent. So basically, I'll be going through three very simple but cool things that every starter scripter can learn to do easily. Literally, all you need to do in order to be able to apply these things is know the basics of coding in Roblox Studio and watch the whole video. Man, I wish someone had done a video like this back in the day. If someone had made a video like this, man, I would have saved a lot of time. And we all like saving time, right? All right, so let's get started then. I'll be starting with a very simple one. And this is one of the things that took me the longest to understand for some reason and actually like to apply. What you do with this one is pretty easy. You just change a part of C frame to a script. And if you don't know what a C frame is, Put simply, C frame is a property of any part, just like position or orientation. C frame, simply put, is the combination of like position and orientation in one single property. That's all you need to worry about right now. So what you want to do is spawn any part, for example, one like this one right here. I'm going to put a click detector inside of it so you can see the teleportation moving once I click the part. Alright, here I got the click detector event. This is just runs any line of code that is between here and here whenever we click the part. First, we gotta find our character in the workspace so we can later know where he is. So I just stored him inside of a variable saying workspace colon with a child I am Ludius, which basically will make the script wait until an instance or object called I am Ludius is in workspace. And then inside the character, you want to find the humanoid root part, which is like a part that usually doesn't move inside a character. And for that, you want to do character or char colon wait for child humanoid root part. All you got to do to move the part to the front of the character is store the part inside a variable, which we've done here. And literally after that, it's just a matter of changing the C frame property like this. You write down part of C frame so the script knows you're talking about the C frame property. And you're going to say that that's going to be equal to humanoid root part dot C frame times C frame dot new open close parentheses and inside the parentheses what you're going to want to write down is how far and in which direction you want the part to be remember x is left right the second one it's y meaning up down and z is frontwards or backwards to put the part just in front of the character you just gotta change the z axis i want it to be one or three stars in front of the character so i put one or three i know it's kind of weird that a negative value reference is front but you just gotta have to deal with it and i really don't know why this is i just it's just how it is let's test it click the part and awesome works perfectly now hold on now you might be wondering Paludius, why do i need to know how to do this don't worry it'll all make sense in a minute just stick until the end of the video i promise it will be worth it so okay let's say we want to make this part look at our face for example whenever we click it I'll recycle some of the script we made before. So we have the part stored and we have the click detector event and function. We also have our character. So this also has to do with C frame. Don't worry so much on understanding what C frame is. Just try to remember what you can do with it and over time it'll naturally make sense. Don't worry about it. You just gotta type part.c frame equals c frame dot look at open parenthesis part dot position comma character dot head dot position and you close the parenthesis so let me explain this what's happening over here real quick c frame dot look at is like the function that lets us do this like to make a part look at another part or uh, at another position we have two arguments for this function the first one is what position you want the part to have once it changes to look at whatever position you want it to and the second one is where you want the part to look. The part dot position is very important here since the position you set here will be the position of the object when it changes to look at whatever you want it to look. So if you want the part to retain its position, you must write down part dot position. Remember to always type the position in the part you want it to look. This looks towards a position, not the part itself. So you must reference the position property of the part you wanted to look at. I right? you're probably smart, so I'm guessing that made sense. That makes sense. Hopefully, yeah. I don't know why I'd expect anyone to understand it the first try if I didn't. But then again, I'm kind of lacking brain cells, like severely. So basically, I'm stupid as fuck. Right, let's test this to see what we got here, and I right, double use. It works perfectly. 
And the last thing you should know is how to move things or how to push things forward. All right, so we're gonna use kind of the same script for this. We're gonna recycle this. This is going to be the longest code. So stay focused throughout the whole explanation, all right? So we have the same click detector event coupled with a function. We'll use something called a linear velocity to make the part move to the direction it is facing. So we got our part here, right? Just do exactly as I do. So a linear velocity is basically like a force that will be applied to the part. But in order for it to work, it needs to be inside an attachment. And that attachment needs to be inside the part we want to move. So we'll create an attachment and put it inside the part we have to move, which is this one right here, right? To create this, you put this inside of variable so we can later play with it instance dot new open parenthesis attachment close parenthesis in the variable i'm just going to call it attachment you can call it whatever you want but it just stands short for attachment and then to put it inside the part we want it to move just do a comma after the quotation marks and write down where you want it in this case it's this part right so just write part now we create the linear velocity we create an instance inside a variable of course like we always do i'll name this variable lv short for linear velocity you can name it whatever you want of course and inside the variable is going to be instance.new open parenthesis linear velocity close parenthesis which gives us the pushing thing i was talking about earlier the linear velocity important you gotta put this inside the attachment we created earlier you just gotta do the same thing you did to the attachment so just write down comma after the quotation marks and then you write down where you want it in which is the attachment we created earlier right hold on we're not done yet you're gonna kind of retell the script which will be the attachment the linear velocity will be working with by writing the following down lv dot attachment zero is equal to att which is the attachment we created now we gotta specify how strong and fast we want the part to move if you don't do these next things it won't work you're already here so keep going we're gonna be accessing the properties of the linear velocity we just created meaning of this thing right here every time you try to access a property of something in case you didn't know already you write down dot and then the name of the property first let's specify the max amount of speed and strength we want the part to move at for these you want to change the property called max force so write down here lv dot max force pro tip always use 100,000 here unless you know what you're doing this will prevent some bugs that are very annoying trust me they're no fun you don't want to deal with them now the last thing we're going to do is tell the computer what direction to move the object to and how strongly or fast the property for this is called vector velocity so you write down lv since we're going to be modifying a property of that linear velocity we just created and keep repeating myself and being very specific repetitive but give me a pass because i was just brain dead when i was learning these things and i just couldn't understand simple concepts so sometimes i'm just trying to make sure you understand through repetition because i'm just trying to prevent you from making the mistakes i made that makes sense Aww. okay so write down lv dot vector velocity equal and here's the important thing write down exactly as i put here okay part dot c frame dot look vector times how fast you want the part to move in this case just for example purposes i'll use 25 so you have part dot c frame dot look vector times 25 and what this means right here the part dot c frame dot look vector is that you're basically telling the script that you want it to move in the direction the part is looking that's why it's called look vector just associate look vector to where it's looking and this this number right here just know that the higher this number is the faster and stronger the part will move and that's about it let's test this one quick to see if it work and yep it's moving our part perfectly mission accomplished very simple but very important thing that you can use to create cool stuff if you still haven't connected all the dots together these three things are what most people use to create like shots for bullets spells like fireballs and stuff so definitely good stuff to know hold on you ain't of the hook yet homeboy i'm leaving you with an actionable step you can do a challenge a homework if you will yeah <laughs> i believe in homework like in school <laughs> okay so experiment with this previous three things you've learned and combine them to make a part that spawns in front of your character when you click it and moves towards your head literally just combine the three things make sure the part is not anchored of course because if it is anchored the linear velocity won't work so make sure the part is not anchored when you do this and just in case you don't know how to do it you can always come back to this video and see how i did it i might put like a sped up version of it in the background so you can know how to do it also i'm gonna try to leave like the script in the description definitely check that out and keep leveling up and i'll see you when i see you peace